Hello and welcome to RT Magazine, a show about Middletown High School, its students, and the community. News about you and for you. I'm Morgan Vandry. In this week's show, Rihanna Kincaid gives us a look into the former MHS student's career. Baron Rop dives into the annual tradition that takes place in downtown Frederick. Jacob Holcomb reviews a fan favorite musical that is now streaming on Netflix, as well as wraps up our show with an RT Plus piece with his Dairy Goats. This week's show is brought to you by... Colin Shrine, a former MHS graduate, recently discussed his field of work with a group of Sharon Steggers science class students. Let's go to Rihanna Kincaid with more on the subject. Recently, Colin Shrine, a graduate of Middletown High School, spoke to the MHS science teacher Sharon Steggers students about his work as a conservationist and ecologicalist in Thailand. Shrine works focuses on the snakes of Thailand, which he discusses in a Google Meet that Ms. Steger organized for 250 students. So why do you work with snakes? If you can convince people to like snakes, then you can convince people to like any species. Snakes are an excellent poster child for conservation. So that's primarily why. So when you're working with snakes, do you normally have a team with you or is it depend on the snake? Uh, so my graduate students are actually the ones that do most of the working uh, with the animals directly. So it would be each student works with their own particular species, with their own particular research question. Um, you know, when I did my PhD, yeah, I did the hands-on work um, and I was working with green pit vipers, which are a small ambush predator that's arboreal and accounts for about 30% of the venomous snake bites that occur within Thailand. Um, but now, again, most of what I do is help the students tailor their research questions and decide on what sort of analyses to do. Um, I teach the students how to run simulations to make sure that their science is good. But... Um, in terms of hands-on field work, no, I really don't do too much aside from going out and checking to make sure the students are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, I mean, I work with all sorts of reptiles okay. um, and really anything that has to do with space. So ha space use, like how organisms are moving, that's kind of where our research focus is. So predicting what is the most likely pathway an animal is going to take and why they are going to take those pathways. How do those pathways lead to conflict between animals and humans? So, you know, it's not only snakes, it's uh, monitor lizards. We analyze mammal data for other folks. We don't collect the data, but we analyze it. Um, it's kind of just anything really. I'm not a snake ecologist. I'm kind of a spatial ecologist. Oh, why did you invite Colin Shrine to come into your class and speak? Well, first of all, the uh, virtual learning and guest speakers has been challenging this uh, semester. Uh, we also wanted to va uh, value his time. He um, actually presented to us at 12.30 a.m. Thailand time. Uh, which was very uh, gracious of him. And uh, with Mrs. Uh, Burkhans' approval, we were able to have about 250 students and one Google Meet and have one virtual field trip. Our um, classes were studying the human impact on the ecosystems. And uh, he has uh, written lots and lots and lots of articles and has done lots of conference talks even before the virtual world about venomous snakes and um, has a great, great uh, love for these animals. Every year, Carroll Creek is lit up with sailboats by Frederick businesses for sailing into the winter solstice. 
Baron Robb talks to an organizer of the project and looks into the creativity behind the event. The annual boats traditions on Carroll Creek brings plenty of tourists to the Frederick area. I interviewed some of the orchestrators of this event and talked to them about the boats. In my role as Director of Economic Development, of course, the city owns and operates Carroll Creek Park where the boat project um, is, is occurring. And uh, although I'm not directly involved in the boat project itself, I, you know, um, have had involvement in and oversee a lot of the, uh, the design and use of Carroll Creek Park. So do you have any favorite, like, do you have a favorite boat or any boats that um, are notable this year? Well, I think one of the most interesting ones is the, um, the flying dog boat that has the octopus on the back of it holding you know a can and it has a has a fountain coming out of the can i particularly think that one was very creative i i like that one a lot i also like the um starry starry night uh you know um boat with the with the you know kind of um artistic flair that it has um but the cool thing is is that people obviously can um can vote with their money for the boat that they like the best. So at the end of the day, you can see which which boats people like the best by their votes with their with their money. The sailing into the winter solstice event has brought in thousands of tourists to the Frederick area, even during the pandemic. I, I think I think a good estimate would probably be over the course of the time that it's it's here, probably twenty to thirty thousand people. Griffin cites the creativity of Dr. Pete Kremers in coming up with the boats project and reflects upon strides made since the project began. Dr. Pete Kremers, who came up with the concept of putting the water lilies in, which has been hugely successful, wanted to do something that would allow people to continue to come and experience Carroll Creek Park through the cold months. And they came up with the idea of doing this sailing through the winter solstice, which is what the boat project is called. And that, that project um, now has been going on for several years, but um, you know, it's, uh, there's 20 boats, including four landlocked boats. Uh, so 24 boats in all. And um, you know, they, they goes from basically the suspension bridge all the way over to um, to Market Street and really onto the other side of Market Street now. And um, they've basically created an, a, uh, an opportunity for people to come and even ride occasionally on a boat past all of them in addition to walking. Mr. Griffin also covers some challenges that occurred during the process. Um, so the biggest challenge is many of these boats are heavy so getting them from the street off of a trailer, down the creek, into the creek, and then they all have to be anchored into the water so that they don't move. And they have to be tethered with electric cables that allow them to be lit at night. Uh, and, and all of that has to be done in a way that doesn't allow mischievous folks from climbing on or damaging the boats or, or making you know, uh, a problem out of, out of it all. So really the hardest part, I think, for the logistics is, um, is getting the boats from the street, from the trailers down the creek, into the water, anchoring them and tethering them. The rest of it is, is, is much uh, easier. So what are some of the charitable causes that you donate to? through the course of this? Each boat, each the organizer of each boat um, picks their own charity. And when you donate to a boat, you're donating to that charity. So for example, the Rotary Club um, has Second Chances Garage, which is a place where people can donate their cars to people that don't have automobile tra transportation and they'll fix the car and they'll help put it back on the road and give it to or sell it for a very low cost to a, 
a deserving person. Um, you know, uh, the United Way is another boat that um, is another uh, charity. Um, the Phoenix Recovery Academy, which is for, uh, you know, drug addiction. Um, one of the, uh, one of the, the charities is Hood College, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, Sophia Madigan's Playground, um, the Hurwitz Breast Cancer Fund, and many, many others. Um, there's, you know, the VA veterans programs and uh, rescue mission and faith house. So there's just a whole lot of things that people can donate to. And you can either donate based on what you think is the best boat, or you can donate to your favorite, favorite charity. Dr. Pete Kremers, the chairman of Sailing Through the Winter Solstice, says that this is an event that truly brings joy to the downtown Frederick and Carroll Creek area. And as for the boats, they will be in Carroll Creek until February 13th. Last month, Netflix began streaming the film adaptation of the Broadway musical The Prom, directed by Ryan Murphy. This movie has received mixed audience and critic reviews so far. Let's see what RT reporter Jacob Holcomb thinks. If you are looking for a glamorous, Broadway-inspired musical movie with a happy ending, I think The Prom is the movie for you. This movie is inspired and loosely based on the Broadway musical The Prom. It is directed by Ryan Murphy, who is very well known to be the director of the hit show Glee. Some people you may recognize in this movie are Meryl Streep and James Corden. This movie starts out when two well-known Broadway actors, Dee Dee Allen, played by Meryl Streep, and Barry Glickman, played by James Gordon, star in a new hit Broadway musical about the Roosevelts. After the opening night, this show ends up closing because of the harsh reviews from the critics. To combat the narcissistic reviews that Dee Dee and Barry have against them, they decide that they should make some sort of action and try to get people to like them again. As they are searching for an idea for people to like them again and grow an advocacy in the community, they come across the story of a young girl from Indiana by the name of Jo Ellen Pellman, who wants to bring her girlfriend, Ariana DeBose, as her date to her high school prom. The school administration is totally against this, and it really sparks a fire in Barry and Dee Dee. They want to make a difference, and they also want people to like them again. As they're all sitting at the bar that night, discussing how they're going to get to Indiana, their bartender, Trent Oliver, who is bartending in between gigs, lets him know that he's in the tour cast of Godspell. This tour will have a tour bus and will be going straight to Indiana. Next thing you know, they're all loading up in the tour bus to get to Indiana. If you're someone who loves Broadway or big musical numbers with singing and dancing and props and sets and beautiful costumes and choreography, I would definitely recommend this movie for you. I would also recommend this movie for anyone who is into LGBTQ movies. This movie has the classic plot of people going into a situation for their own good, but coming out on the other side a better person. I don't think this movie is anything revolutionary, but I do feel that it is a good quality movie that has a good plot, entertaining musical numbers, and a good sappy lesson and an outcome. You can watch this movie on Netflix, and I would definitely recommend the watch. Many students are involved with the various agricultural programs offered at MHS, as well as tend to their own animals at home. Jacob Holcomb shows us how he takes care of his goats every morning. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Holcomb and I'm going to be going over with you my morning routine when taking care of my four dairy goats. The first thing I do is I grab the bottle of milk um, that I prepared the night before for my baby goat Ivy and I unscrew the top. I put it in the microwave to warm it up just so it's a nice temperature for her and I put it in for about a minute and 30 seconds. While that's warming up, I go to the bathroom and I fill up a nice bucket of warm water for the goats so that they have some warm water during these cold winter mornings. I make sure to place that bucket by the front door so it's ready for me when I'm ready to go. And I grab that warm bottle of milk and I begin to shake it up to make sure that everything is incorporated. Once all that is ready, I put the nipple on the bottle and it is ready to go. 
I place all this by the door so that it's ready for when I leave. I make sure to suit up for the cold. I put on two jackets and I'm ready to go. I put on my boots and I head right out the door. Once I'm down to the goats, I am usually greeted by the baby, Ivy, and I pet her in the morning, make sure she's getting some love, and I let her out to give her her bottle. She usually drinks her bottle up pretty quickly because she's usually pretty hungry from the night before. Next, I make sure to put her back into the barn with the rest of the big girls, and I head into the other side of the barn to grab some hay. The hay is stored in this bin, but the rest of it is stored on the top of the barn. I make my way into the barn and I put the hay into these crates that I'm using for now until we build a better hay feeding system. I next pour their warm water into their buckets and I put them up on the ledge. I head into the barn and I just place them on the two spots that I have hooks. I place the one on this side of the barn and I go on the other side of the barn and I place the other water bucket there. Next I head up to where I store my feed and I grab some feed just for Maggie and I go back down. The other girls get feed at night but Maggie gets feed at night and the morning. Um, I put her feed on the milking stand. I then go back in and grab her from the barn. She's usually pretty eager to get her feed in the morning so she jumps up pretty fastly. I make sure to squeeze out the first two um, squirts from her teats just to make sure that the milk is good quality. I then continue to milk all of the milk out of her udder. Once she is done, she jumps down from the milking stand. This morning she was being a little bit of a struggle to get back into the barn, but she finally went back in. Here are some nice Maggie sniffs for you. I then grab the milking can and I also grab the bottle and I head right back up to the house. Once I get inside, I grab this pitcher and this metal strainer and I also grab a coffee filter. I then pour the milk through this and it makes sure that it gets any sort of hair or dirt that might have gotten in the milk from the barn. I then grab that filter, I throw it in the trash, and I begin to pour this milk into a mason jar. I then put a cap on top of the jar and I label the top with M or N for morning and night and I put the date on top. The milk jar goes back into the fridge and that is it for my morning dairy goat routine. That's it for this episode of RT Magazine, part of the Roundtable's multimedia experience. Thanks for watching. You can find all of our episodes on mhs.roundtable.com or you can download our app Student News Source for access to our articles, videos, and podcasts. Have a great week.